y'all. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shamika and this is Check the Rhymes. I am super excited that you're here as always. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys, we are talking about gaining financial freedom because I don't know about you, but I have like seen on social media, everybody's talking about trying to get out of debt, you know? And so this is a show that can actually show you the proper steps to do that, right? All right, so joining me today, I have Dan R. I can't pronounce his last name. But, but he is the host of the show Going From Broke and it is streaming right now, season two on Crackle. So make sure you get the app. You gotta download the app, then go watch the show. Got it? See, I can offer you those kind of steps. Anyway, let me bring it back, reel it back in. Dan is gonna be talking about what we can expect on season two of Going From Broke and he's gonna offer us some tips and steps so that you can find your way to financial freedom. So stay tuned because you definitely don't wanna to miss today's show. Hi, Dan, welcome to Check the Rhymes. How are you? Well, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Today's the launch of Going From Broke season two on Crackle by executive producer Ashton Kutcher. So I'm both excited and nervous. I hope people like it and get informed and, um, and spread the word that you can be the CEO of your life if you learn how to manage your money. Very true. Now I have to ask you because I don't want to screw your last name up. How do you say your last name? Rosen Swig, but most people just call me Dan R. <laughs> okay, all right, Dan R, I like that. <laughs> so season two of Going From Broke, what can we expect to see this season? You can expect to be entertained, informed, educated, surprised, and uh, emotionally torn uh, as you root for certain people and aren't sure if other people are gonna make it through. Look, when we did season one, we had we knew that student debt was a big issue. It's 45 million Americans with over $1.7 trillion worth of debt, and it's dev mm -hmm. devastating. So we know about, you know, we're learning about, and the pandemic really did reveal all the institutionalization of of, of racism and sexism and other things. But I think there's another variable here that me, people need to consider, which is we are institutionalizing poverty uh, and debt in our young people and our future of America. And it's not fair and it's not right. And the show really wants to take it on. And, and but as you know, when you have Ashton Kutcher, the executive producer, then you know it's gonna be entertaining and interesting as well as informative. Absolutely. Now, my question for you is, are you seeing that people have more debt like with student loans, credit cards? Like what is the, where is that debt coming from? Well, it starts with having bad habits about money and no one ever teaching you about it. So the spending <laughs> habits of people is they spend more than they have because they think, oh, one day, you know, I'll, I'll make more. And, um, right. and then they get themselves into debt starting early. Then it's really about college debt. So if you go to college, 50% of Americans go to college, 43% don't finish, but all of them end up having some form of debt. And so mm -hmm. when you come out with either a degree or not a degree and you have debt and you realize for the first time, one, you gotta pay it back. Two, the amount you borrowed is a lot less than you're gonna end up paying back because it comes with interest. Three, since most people borrow from the government, you can't renegotiate your interest rate and you cannot declare bankruptcy on it. So this is something that's gonna hang around you like an albatross for the rest of your life. I bet you didn't know that there's 5 million Americans over the age of 40 that still have college debt. And so it starts with you graduate, suddenly wow. you're handed a pile of debt and now you gotta pay rent. Oh, but you can't get, you can't get a rental because you don't have any, um, uh, you don't have a credit card. So you get a credit card, but you can't right. get a credit card because you don't have a credit score. So you got 22% interest. Um, and then you end up using your credit card to pay off the bare minimum of your student debt, which has 6% interest. And so all of a sudden you become in this swirl of, of debt. And we, we want people to learn about money and get out of it. And so it, it really becomes really devastating for people at a very young age and really prevents them from living the lives that they deserve. And so we try to make it less emotional, get rid of the taboo about asking about money. Um, you need mm -hmm. to be able to ask because no one taught you. And then we give them real tips and tricks and you follow real lives, real journeys, real emotions. Um, and so the first time that we ever um, say hello to somebody is actually the first time we ever met them. So we have no idea what's gonna happen. Oh, wow, I love that. You know, and it's interesting when you were saying when you come out of college, like for, my, for myself, my job that I had coming out of college, I made 
six seventy five an hour. Like I couldn't afford to do anything really. So it's it's it is very real out here. Um, do you well, have like what's average, your number one? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, what is your number one tip for for people that are wanting to gain financial freedom? Well, the number one step is to admit you need help. The number two step is to start to do a budget. Most people mm -hmm. don't know what they spend money on or how much they spend. So sometimes it's as simple as how much money do I bring in in 30 days and how much money do I spend in 30 days and what do I spend it on? How much is gas? How much is rent? How much is food? How much is entertainment? How much is clothes? And at the end of that journey, you're going to realize you spend a ton of money on things that you didn't need to spend it on. So when you look at how much do I make versus how much do I spend? And then what do I spend it on versus what do I have to spend it on? And then you organize your credit cards in order of the ones with the highest amount of debt, but then also cut it by the ones where you pay the most interest. Then you want to consolidate them to the lowest interest card and you want to pay more than the minimum on anything you do and you want to build new habits and you want to it's you know it's like moving up the leaderboard of peloton which is you want to right. be the one that spends less and makes more and turn it into gamification enjoy it be proud of yourself and you learn you can learn these habits in a month and you're going to see that these people truly turned around their lives. Everything we show you is exactly what happened. And it's amazing that when you become the CEO of your life, you try to make it less emotional. Look, it sucks to be in debt and it sucks to have to make changes. Nobody wants to do that, particularly young people. But our egos right. make us buy clothes we don't need or be the one that buys the drinks at the bar we don't need. Why are we spending $8 on a drink when if you wanna have a drink, drink at home, you know, and then go out. It's it's. There are, mm -hmm. there are real mm -hmm. tips and tricks that you can do. And so it's entertaining and interesting, but you can go to goingfrombroke.info or you can go to chegg.com and go going for, look for Going From Broke or go to Crackle, uh, which is where the show is, and you will get honest, real tips and tricks. Thank you so much, Dan. I am going to log in to, to Crackle today and check the season two out. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for joining me today on Check the Rhymes and for giving some amazing financial steps. To, to gain financial freedom. Thank you very much. We want young people to be able to live a life that they love, not one that they own.